Welcome back Vikings, I'm Trey Parker, your anchor for this episode of the Viking Report. Pokemon Go has touched the palms of millions this year. Now we're going to Pokemon Go over to Forest to see why it's so great. Pokemon Go has been a part of a lot of people's summers. And I mean a lot of people. There are millions of people that play it every single day. We see it everywhere. We see it on our social media. We see it on the news. We see it absolutely everywhere. People walking along the streets, staring at their phone. But what's it all about? <laughs> oh my, my god, he's so, so I still can't catch it. Don't. Go to your home. Corey, or Saint as most people call him, is an avid Pokemon Go player. We went to him to see exactly what the hype was all about. Um, they nicknamed me the uh, the Saint of Main Street, which is out in uh, downtown St. Charles. Uh, when the game started, uh, I got the idea to mount my phone on a bike and ride around as fast as I could and find all these things quicker than everybody else. Um, so when I found out information of where things were, I would just run back to the lures uh, and you know inform people where they were. And people would go get them, and everybody just started saying, "You're a saint, you're a saint." So they just dubbed me the Saint of Main Street, and it just kind of stuck. There's a social aspect about it. I mean, there's not one person that doesn't know who. Pikachu is, you know, if if you know anything about Pokemon, you know what a Pikachu is. Um, it, it's it's a way for people to connect, you know. If you didn't know anything about Pokemon, and I said, you know, I'm sitting here playing Pokemon Go, you'd say, oh, is that the one with Pikachu? And that would strike up a conversation. Even businesses have started to realize just how popular Pokemon Go is. As an example, the zoo had over a thousand people there for their Pokemon Go Safari Night. The workers were dressed up as different Pokemon, and they even have different tours for each of the teams. Um, well, I mean, Pokemon Go is the first, besides Ingress, uh, in a way, to uh, you know. Um, Add in the AR aspect of gaming, which will change the word, the way that gaming is done now, um, with you know virtual reality and adding your camera into the game, um, and that's that's part of history. Like they'll remember this. Uh, the first time you know another game comes out and it's perfected and it's amazing, and you get to use your camera to to game with it. Let's say you know Pokemon Go did that first, and I played that game. You know, I I, I got to enjoy that the first day that it came out. You know. So just to gather a little bit of history with it and be a part of that. Who says it's a problem? If it's just you that says it's a problem, well, probably not a big, huge problem that people are going to want to spend a lot of money on to solve. It stands for Engineering Design and Development. And what it is, it's a year-long class. It's the fourth year or the final year of the engineering PLTW, Project Lead the Way curriculum. I made a little box that you can put the Sharpie in and pull it out. So you don't have to hold on to the cap. It just comes out really easy. Like, have you ever like used a sharpie and like had to take the top off? Could lose it or like put it on the end of there and then have to take it off and stuff. This invention makes it a lot easier and a lot cleaner to do it. There's several groups that have already said, "Oops, this is you know been patented and all these different uh, iterations of it are patented." So we're going to change our idea, and so that's happening a lot right now. What was the first idea we had? We had a um, stroller. Oh, now we're crowdsourcing. Crowdsourcing? Yeah, crowdsourcing for ideas. Is that Legos? And so they spend the whole year uh, looking into how valid the problem is, looking into is it already a product, can it be made into a product, designing um, different ideas, coming up with a prototype, testing it, and seeing whether it actually works. Um, it also can be rewarding. It's challenging, rewarding, and uh, you know a lot of people enjoy it and, and get a lot out of it. Now we're going to head over to Abby Campbell and her coverage on the new staff at Howe. Starting the new season, Howell opens up its field to a new head football coach. Corey Snyder explains how he got the job. Um, the job came open at Francis Howell, and we live in the district, and so it seemed like a natural fit to. Uh, apply and see what the job was like and you know I met Co Coach Irwin and um, really liked what I saw and the opportunity and just kind of one thing led to another. I think the biggest thing that I'll bring to the program is kind of a focus on character development and classroom work along with good football. Um, I'm really big into those types of things and so it's important to me that 
Um, I help develop men in all areas of their life, not just as football players. He brings a whole new side to our team. With Coach Schneider, we've developed more of a team aspect. We're more brothers than we were before. I'm excited for this season. Not only did the football team go through a change, but so did the drama department when Edward Cole stepped in as the new drama teacher. And I was teaching English for two years, English and speech, at Lindbergh High School. And I sort of jumped at the chance to work in a school district like this. I bring, I think, kind of a unique set of experiences. It's a good combination of uh, teaching experience and life experience. Um, he's really nice. He's got a new innovative style. He's changed a lot of things, like audition processes and crews are different. So I'm excited to work with him. He has a lot of new ideas. Here at Howell, we currently have 49 different clubs to offer, and you can find a list of them in the activities office. But if none of them fit your fancy, then there's a new club coming out called Strings and Such by Dylan Hampton and Hamming Lynn. Strings and Such started around second semester last year after we realized that a lot of people love playing stringed instruments, ukuleles, guitars, violins, bass guitar, and we wanted a club where we could um, nurture that love for string instruments. So if you wanted to join the club or even just know more about the club, you go ahead and um, text at ukulele123, no spaces in that at all, to 81010, and they'll join, the, that'll sign you up for the Remind, and then just go ahead and send me a text and I'll reply to you with any questions or concerns you might have. And of course, the, um, I'll also have an automated text that sends out to you our times that we meet and also where we meet. What's up guys, my name is Forrest and I'm here today with your sports preview. Tomorrow we have tons of games going on. We got girls varsity golf, girls varsity tennis, varsity softball, and girls JV volleyball. There's also girls freshman and varsity volleyball along with boys swim and dive. That about wraps up the Viking Report. I'm Trey Parker. Have a great day Vikings. <laughs>